Well, she's the self-proclaimed mom of Instagram. Nutritionist and author Rose Reisman uses fun and informative videos to teach her over 130,000 followers cooking hacks and easy recipes. That's a lot of followers. And GLE is getting an up-close uh, check out of Rose's <laughs> kitchen this morning, learning from the expert herself. G, can't wait to see what uh, you and Rose whip up this morning. Yeah, I, what a real treat to be hanging out with the Rose Reisman <laughs> in your kitchen. In my kitchen. This is the best Thank place. You. And listen, if you don't follow her on Instagram, you have to because I'm hooked. Yeah. All your hacks are amazing yeah. and we've Thank got you. a couple of hacks uh, right now. Yeah, and, yeah, and the handle is at Rose Reisman, easiest handle ever. Okay, yeah. so bacon. We all love bacon, right? So here I have it on a baking sheet. What's it doing on a baking sheet? Well, normally we fry it out, splatters all over, mm -hmm. sits in tons and tons of oil. You're gonna love this hack. Take your bacon, just standard bacon, lay it out on some parchment paper. Then you're gonna take some flour. You can either use a sifter or you can uh, just put it with a, um, a spoon and then just rub it off. You don't need too much on there. We're gonna preheat our oven now to about 400 degrees. Yes. Just like this, no rack. You're gonna put it in for about 20 minutes or until you're happy with the crispness. Take a look at how gorgeous this bacon is, but here, gee, you gotta taste it. I because will. without tasting it, you'll never know. Now, the purpose of the flour is to Okay, so it dries, dries it, it out. out, takes out the moisture, makes it crisper. Got it. And it keeps <gasps> it straight. And it's so easy. So, you know, I find that mm -hmm. at times when I would make bacon with my kids, mm -hmm. I was worried. It was splattering all over. You always get burnt, right? Yeah. This way, it's in the oven. It comes out magically. Is no that, mess right? and easy. Mm. Wow, mm. this is fabulous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, so good. I do like Sunday morning. Bacon. I know. Sunday morning brunch is what you have to have. Love it. Mm, I like it too. Can you okay. use another other powders as well? You could use cornstarch. You mm. use a little less cornstarch because it has more of a thickening powder. Got it. But the flour is easy, and as I say, just dust it over, and you don't have to worry. People say, would well, you have to wipe the flour off afterwards? No, no, it absorbs, and you'll see there's like no moisture left. It's incredible. Perfect. Okay, right. so eggs. Okay, we all know how to hard boil an egg, right? Actually, I don't. <laughs> okay, gee, so I'm, I'm listening. She, she's going to come here with some cooking <laughs> lessons. So normally you put it in boiling water, but yeah. again, do you put it in cold? Do you put it in boil? How long do you boil it for? Is it simmering? And then people find they either get loose, jammy eggs or so hard boiled that there's a green tinge yes, yeah. between the yolk and the white, right. and these aren't. Okay, you ready? Yeah. You're going to put these in a muffin tin. You could use 12, 24, whatever you have. Mm -hmm. Set your oven to 325 degrees, no water, put it in like this, I promise you, in 25 to 30 minutes, that's about the right number. Yeah. They come out hard boiled, immediately put them into some ice water, and the ice water takes, uh, allows you to peel the skin off that much easier because it pulls the white away from the shell. Give it a good crack. Yeah. Keep running it under some cold water to peel it. Yes. So the ice water is important until you can handle it and it feels really, really cold. Okay. So that will help. And then, here's my egg. I took these out this morning. Yes. If you look, hopefully it's not jammy and it looks good. There you go. And look how light. gorgeous and creamier. If you want to try a little yeah. bite, I actually find that this method makes a creamier yolk. Mm. Isn't that nice? Not yeah. overcooked, because no. overcooked eggs are dry. Yes. And you get them in restaurants all the time. So this is a great hack, because using a muffin tin is so easy. Again, you're not watching boiling water going. It's no danger of the water spilling yes. over. You bake it in the oven, your eggs. Oh my goodness, I never thought of just baking eggs like that. I know, no, nobody, whenever they see this, they go, yeah. what, did, what have you done? You mean you forgot <laughs> to crack them, Rose? I went, no, 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 that, that's another hack. Love it, <laughs> Isn't having that great? breakfast with Rose yeah. Roseman. Uh, you gotta stay tuned for the next segment because we have a couple of other hacks coming up and trust me, you don't want to miss it. Good morning. We are here at Rose Reisman's kitchen. Yeah, I know, I feel great. like an honor. It's an honor being here. And we're talking about different hacks. Right. We had two hacks in the last segment, two more here. Absolutely. Okay. So let's take a look at salmon, one of the most popular and common fishes eaten. Mm -hmm. Often, you either love the skin or you don't. You were saying you don't like the skin. I don't like the skin. I love the skin, but you have to keep in mind that the skin does contain more of the uh, pesticides and PCB, so you want to be careful. Okay. So removing the skin is not something your grocery store will often do for yeah. you. So 
taking a knife and doing it. Honestly, when you do that, you take off half the fish. You do. <laughs> so here's a great, great hack. Take some boiling water, just in a kettle, whatever you want. Now this one I have done already just because it takes a minute or two for the skin to get loose. You're gonna pour just a little bit of water over top. And not to worry, I am not cooking the fish at all. Okay. Uh, the side will look a little bit like it's been uh, cooked for 30 seconds, but not penetrating at all the okay. fish. You wait about 30 seconds, and then you can take a knife just to help you initially, but I want you to watch how quickly this will start to peel off. Just after 30 seconds? About a minute, a minute, minute or minute? two okay. minutes. You can bring a knife under, but you're not taking away <gasps> any skin. Look at that. And, and you peel it very slowly. So yes. you don't. And if it gives you any trouble, you can pour a little bit more boiling water, wait a minute. So your best bet is to wait about a minute, two minutes for the hot water just to get under the skin. It releases the fat. <gasps> Look at that. And then at the very end. Super easy. And Look at for that. those that love the skin, enjoy it. Cook it up if you want. But you've now got your skin removed beautifully and you haven't taken any of the flesh out. And that's so easy. It's so great. So lovely. And then now you're ready to do whatever you want to do magic with it. So take it or, or bake it. Okay, so this next one is my favorite hack. <laughs> when I saw you post this, I lost my mind. All right, so. Yeah. You take a lime. Now, limes can be nasty little creatures, mm -hmm. meaning lemons you tend to get a lot of juice out of. Limes, you buy them and you squeeze them and you get a tablespoon out and you go crazy. So right. first thing I like to do is roll your limes, okay? Uh -huh. Or put them in the microwave for about 30 seconds. It releases the juice. Really? Yeah. Just stick it in the microwave? That's it. Oh. Now, typically, what we do is we cut a lime like this and we juice it. Yeah, that's so what I'm I I'm going to show you. This is how much lime juice I got out of doing it like this. Now I'm gonna show you another technique. We're gonna do what's called remove the cheeks. So I like to lay it flat mm -hmm. and just, oh, you're gonna give the middle a little bit of space. We're gonna cut down and form what's called a cheek. The other side, we're gonna get the other cheek. Okay, just watch, Whoop, oh. watch your fingers there. We don't wanna lose any fingers there. Okay, gotta get my knife sharpened, right? All right, we're going to just cut this down as well. And what you're gonna end up with, if you look over here where yeah. this one was perfectly done, is you see the membrane in the middle, that's like the stem. Mm -hmm. Cut that away, okay? Cut that away. And this is, you can throw out, and if you end up line, uh, zesting these, yes. not zesting, sorry, juicing these, you end up literally with double the juice. Just by cutting yeah, it different. Because you're not them. having the resistance of the stem. Wow. So it's incredible. So do that and roll it, uh -huh. microwave it, and then give yourself some cute little cheeks. Look at that. <laughs> and you get double the juice. D double now, the juice. Now will this work with oranges as well? Yeah, so okay. I tried with oranges and lemons. I didn't quite get double, Yes. but with limes, so much more, and especially, you know, when you're doing, yeah. met, um, you know, like Mexican cuisine, right. you just had Super Bowl, this is what you want your lives for. Perfect. All right, thank, thank you so you. much. Uh, you don't want to miss this next segment. We're going to cook up something that is inexpensive, great for a family meal. It's all coming up. And we know that um, a lot of families are stretched right now, so this next segment, we're going to talk about an inexpensive way to make a family meal with none other than Rose Reisman. I have my fork ready, Rose. You're all <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go home really full today. I am. All right, I love rotisserie chickens. Yes. First of all, making your own chicken is wonderful, but let's be honest, it takes time, you gotta watch it. Nobody's got the time today. So I just went to my local grocery store and $10.99, I mean, you can find them cheaper, you can find them a little more expensive. I bought a whole rotisserie chicken, so one night I'm happy to have a nice piece or with my, with my family, okay. some veggies on the side, but then I've got the rest of this chicken sitting around you don't want to eat that again tomorrow night. No, you so want to I'm going to show you just a, a little bit of what you can do with it. You can do so much mm -hmm. more. Chicken Caesar salad. So Simple. some romaine or kale if you want it even healthier. Slice some chicken, a little bit of crouton, some bacon from our bacon hack. Yes. <laughs> we can put over. And then uh, pasta. I love pasta. It's a whole different experience meal the next night. Mm -hmm. Some diced chicken. So I'll take the chicken often just dice it like this or slice it like that. I put a little pesto, you could do tomato sauce. I had some roasted bell peppers left over. A beautiful meal, your protein, your carb, your vegetables. Beautiful. And then, come on, 
rice. Right. I mean, we love rice. Now, I have used a brown rice here, but try a little bit. It's really nice. All I did was add some soya sauce yes. to my rice, some Asian frozen vegetables, mm. and the chicken. That's it. That's it. A great meal. Again, you've got complex carbs, fiber, protein. Great meal. Make it easy. You don't have to be running out to the fast food all the time. Mm -hmm. And a soup. I mean, during our winter months, a soup is so nourishing. So again, I just put some frozen veggies in, some stock that I bought, some of my cube chicken. Yes. And I've got, again, a meal ready to go. So I just say that this is how you can cook and not have your kids or, or family members say, am I having chicken again tonight? It's not going to look like that. You're going to disguise it and do now, it like this. Now, to get the biggest bang for your buck, if you have the bones left over from oh, the yeah. whole chicken, what do you do with okay, that? Okay, so you can freeze them yeah. or you can make a chicken stock out of it. Even at times, if I do a risotto or a soup, I yes. put the bones in. It gives it so much more flavor. Really? And just remove the bones afterwards. In a Fantastic. risotto. Yeah, in a risotto. Or even a chili or another soup you're making. Right. I take the bones, be careful of the smaller bones, of course, the larger bones, or freeze the bones up for when you're in the mood and have the time to make some really and good chicken And this is a soup. really inexpensive way to change oh things up every I day. Oh my God, I mean, per person, I think you're looking at $2, $3. Come on, you can't get a meal today for yeah. that. So what I try to educate people in saying, uh, you know, at Rose Reisman is get yourself chicken like this. Yes. Don't complain about the cost. Spread it out. Have different meals like this. You go to fast food restaurants today. I took my uh, my grandchildren and had two adult meals, two kids meals. It was fifty dollars. Wow. Fifty dollars to feed four. Yeah. Whereas this way, you have a oh healthy way God. of feeding the and family. And it's affordable, so we don't have to be crying so much about the the cost of food, which has gone up. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, thank Rose. Thank you. Uh, in our next segment, we're going to have a little Valentine's Day yeah. treat. I'm the luckiest person today. Uh, once again, we're here with Rose Reisman. You have to follow her on Instagram because I love all her hacks. We've got another hack here when it comes to strawberries, but of course, Valentine's Day is coming up, and we've got a little special treat. So easy, yeah. so much fun, and so inexpensive to do. Uh, first of all, strawberries. I love yeah. strawberries. What's the pain about strawberries, G? A day later in the fridge, they look wilted, they're soft, yeah. and two days later, they're moldy. Here's a great hack. Put them into a mason jar like this, really tight fitting. They don't have to be filled right up. I'll get over a week of my strawberries looking this good, and I have to tell you, do not wash them. So as soon as you bring them home, yeah. put them in the jar? Put them really? in the jar immediately. Don't keep them in that plastic container. Okay. They stay fresh. This one's been in the fridge already about three days. It looks gorgeous. So that's a great hack before Valentine's, for sure. And then you sure. just wash it just before you're about to just use Just about, it. yeah, absolutely. What? So okay. now let's get going. So the first thing I want to do is show you some chocolate mm. bark. So good. Now I made this with milk chocolate. You could use white. You could use semi-sweet. What I did is take a little bit of my chocolate, a little bit of oil goes a long way. Any kind and, of oil? Uh, I like to use either a grapeseed oil or a peanut oil. Okay. And all you have to do is spread it out on a baking sheet like this. Yes. And use as much chocolate as you want. I think I used about a cup there. All right, spread it out. And then I'm gonna have you do the honors, put whatever you want, oh, but nice. it's Valentine's, so put some sprinkles on. So this would be fun to do with the kids. Oh my God, it'd be fabulous to do with the kids. Or, you know, with your partner. Or, yeah, <laughs> what, whoever, right? Whoever, right? And then I do a little bit more of a drizzle. Keep oh, going, have fun with it. Okay. Refrigerate it, and if you want it instant, freeze it for like five minutes. You end up with that incredible Easy. bark. Easy. Gorgeous, All eh? Right. Look how nice. I know, I know how All I right, so now, chocolate dipped berry, so, so easy. And you're saying it drives you nuts because if you buy this, oh it's my, so expensive. It's a, it's a fortune if you go into those mm -hmm. candy shops. So here, again, I just take a little bit of chocolate and let me see, I'm gonna just dip it in. So here's how you dip again. You put a little bit of oil into your chocolate, mm -hmm. let it just drip off like this, put it onto your parchment paper is the best paper or wax paper. And then I like to make it look again pretty just do that, refrigerate it, and you have the most gorgeous chocolate dipped berries. Easy. Nice, huh? Now, would you like me to move this out of the way? Uh, no, you know, okay. we can keep it there. So now, let's have some fun and do these cute little skewers. Mm -hmm. um, I'll let you do it. I put a strawberry on, I put a marshmallow, um, I buy the one bite brownies, or you could just use brownies that you've made at home. Strawberry, so easy. Again, put it on a baking sheet, a little bit of chocolate, uh, drizzled over, 
perfect and will last in the fridge about two days. Two days. Yeah, okay. as long as those strawberries are kept like and that. And again, fun with the kids. Oh my God, so okay. much fun with the kids. And then again, just, you know, get crazy with chocolate. It's no. come on now. We have about 30 seconds all for right. the last one. So all we have to do yeah. is show these little molds. Yes. You can buy these molds anywhere at any kitchen store. You can get it off Amazon. Fill them up with a little bit of chocolate. Okay, look how cute these are. And again, any sprinkles you want. Mm -hmm. And again, you could use white or dark. But look how adorable these are. And so cute. How long before it? Oh, freezer, so two minutes. Two minutes, like that's seriously? It and pop it out. So I want you to try something. Okay. And for more of these ideas, you can get me at Rose Reisman, and I've got tons and tons of hacks and recipes that are easy. Love it. Perfect for Valentine's or Galentine's. Or Galentine's, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so much fun, yeah. Rose. Thank you so much A for pleasure. having us. A, just a pleasure to do this. Love to do it. We'll send it back to you in studio. Happy Valentine's, everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Indeed, yeah. Well, we are a few days into the Lunar New Year, and the Markham Museum is illuminating the city with a 25-acre indoor and outdoor festival. Sounds pretty spectacular. Lunar Nights here. The Dragon Festival is happening from now until February 25th. Gian Lee this morning live in Markham to show us what it's all about. I mean, what we the introduction sounds pretty amazing. What's it like there, G? Hmm. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Jen. It is beautiful here. We're here on the grounds of the Markham Museum, and they have this incredible event taking place both indoor and outdoor. We're going to start outside because you have to see these incredible structures and lanterns. Uh, so I'm going to bring in Oliveira and Sean. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, Oliveira, tell me, first of all, what are we looking at here? This is Lunar Nights. This is Lunar Nights, and these are beautifully handcrafted silk lanterns from China that are traditional artworks that are handcrafted and we have Sean here from the company that has uh, crafted these which are just beautiful to look at. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so Sean, you came all the way from China. Yes. Hey, welcome. <laughs> so each structure has uh, a meaning behind it. What are we looking at here behind us? What we're looking for is a golden fish. Uh -huh. They represent the uh, good luck, good fortune in Chinese culture. Fantastic. Okay, why don't we walk over to the next area? Um, Ollie, how many uh, structures are we looking at here? So there are over 230 structures here, okay. uh, compromising 20 different scenes that represent different, uh, different parts of the culture. And I love that people can just come here with their kids, walk around and look at the beautiful structures here. Um, Sean, we've got the tigers here now on our left. Tell me a little bit more of the meaning behind that. Yeah, this lantern set is called the Shadow of Tigers. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of the uh, uh, traditional, very traditional uh, performing art. It's called the Shadow Puppetry. Okay. Beautiful. And then I know that pandas have a very significant meaning in Chinese culture, and we've got some beautiful structures here. Tell me about this little area here. So actually, uh, the province that these structures were made in, the panda is their their symbol yeah, for, their, um, the for national, their province. The national treasure, a panda, that comes from our, our province, the Chuan province, where uh, also the lantern comes from. Beautiful. And then I just love how you've utilized the space here, Ollie, because the grounds, it's quite big. And then everywhere you walk, you see something beautiful. Absolutely. There's 23 acres and we've tried to insert something to every corner. Love it. Let's walk over here. And of course, Sean, you've got the beautiful lanterns hanging here. It's it's beautiful. I mean, we've got the dragon here, so that's my favorite part. Yeah, yeah because this year is the uh, dragon year of the, the, in Chinese culture. Yeah. Dragon year is very important here. And uh, dragon represents the prosperity, the strength, and the power. It's, uh, so it's very important. I love it. All right, so thank you so much. And again, uh, this is open on uh, select days and times. And also, the reason Zeppelin, my dog, is here is because there are select days where you can walk with your dog. So how fantastic is this for the family? We have family day coming up plus Valentine's Day. Wouldn't it be nice to take a stroll here? Uh, so if people want more information, obviously they can go to lunarnights.ca. And is there anything else that they should be aware of? Lunarnights.ca will give you all the information of the special dates and times that we are open. They do vary. Yes. Um, and uh, make sure you use the discount codes. There's some really great discount codes up right now. There you go. And uh, right now, this is the Outdoor Trail. We'll continue on in the next segment to show you more of these
incredible, beautiful structures. And then later this morning, we'll go inside the Markham Museum because there's also a whole host of events and activities there as well. Good morning. We are live here at Markham Museum. I've got Zeppelin here as well, enjoying a beautiful stroll at Lunar Nights. Joining me now is Oliveira to tell us more about this incredible event. Good morning. Good morning. I love taking a stroll in the morning with the dog and what a great way to do this here at the Markham Museum. And you actually have pet friendly nights. Those are my favorite <laughs> nights. There are so many dogs that come through and they yes. just, everyone enjoys taking pictures of their dogs. And it's 23 acres and you see these incredible structures. Tell me a little bit more about Lunar Nights. So Lunar Nights is intended to celebrate the Lunar New Year in a new way. Mm -hmm. We are displaying these beautiful artwork that is traditional Chinese silk lanterns. Uh, they just arrived a month ago straight from China and uh, it's a beautiful display. This artwork is, is stunning to look at at night. Uh, uh, yes, especially. And then it's 23 acres so you do a wonderful walk through and what a great way to enjoy this with the family. Valentine's Day is coming yes. up as well. So uh, there are select nights uh, taking place for lunar nights runs through till February 25th. Yes, that's correct. So we will be open for Valentine's Day. It's a great date night, very romantic walk. And then for family day, we've got some great activities planned yeah. um, all throughout the property. Now, if weather permitting, Yes. Um, and if we get some snow, then there are more outdoor activities taking place during lunar nights. Yes, yeah, so we have indoor and outdoor activities, but weather permitting, we have skating. There's a beautiful skating rink that's all lit up and um, a snowshoeing as well. Okay, so if the snow comes, there'll be snowshoeing. And what a great way for the kids to enjoy. We've got Adler here and Lucas and Eli, come on through. Hi, good morning. Good morning. You're Adler. Yeah. Okay, what do you think of the event so far? Uh, I like it. It's pretty nice. Right? Yeah. What a great way to come with your family or your friends and enjoy. Yeah. And it must be nice to miss a little bit of school this morning, right? It's very nice. <laughs> Lucas, how are you? I'm good. Good. What do you think of Lunar Nights? These structures are beautiful. They're very beautiful. Yeah, right? Eli, how old are you? I'm five. Five. What do you think so far of the pandas behind you? Mm, good. Good, right? Okay, come on, guys, let's walk over because you have to see, this is my favorite part here, uh, which is the dragon. And obviously, Ollie, this is a beautiful spot to take some photos and uh, bring the kids here. Absolutely, with the year of the dragon, I mean, of course, we had to have a unique structure to represent it. I love it. So once again, this is until February 25th. Yes. Um, and for more information, where can people go? So please visit us online at lunarnights.ca to purchase tickets and for all full information. Wonderful. Okay, kids, let's come over here to the flower. Come on, Eli. Uh, again, we're having a great time here at Markham Museum. Oh, it's my first time here at the Markham Museum. It's beautiful. The grounds here and right now they're celebrating Lunar Nights. So it's a combination of these beautiful outdoor trail with these beautiful lands lanterns and structures. And then of course you can bring the kids inside. There's a lot of activities happening uh, inside as well. So we're going to bring in a very spe a special guest. Mayor Scarpetti joins hey, us now. Happy, Lunar New, happy Lunar, Lunar, New Lunar New Year. Year. Happy Lunar New Year. I feel so <laughs> underdressed. You look fabulous. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad we're here in Markham. It is a diverse uh, city here, lots of different uh, communities being represented. Tell me a little bit more of why Lunar New Year is so significant here. Well, obviously we have a, a, a big Asian population mm -hmm. here, but it's made up of, of Chinese, Filipinos, Taiwanese, Koreans, and I'll tell you, it's made for a very dynamic community. But uh, I'll also say we have welcomed people from every corner of the world. South Asian community is the next largest group. And I'll tell you, there's always something happening and great restaurants up here as well. Great restaurants. <laughs> I can testify to that for sure. So a lot of activities happening for Lunar Near. We're here at Market Museum, but there's a lot of other areas as well that you can visit. Well, you talked about the Lunar Nights mm -hmm. and, and when you're here enjoying that, I'm very proud of the fact that the Markham Museum partnered with the York Region Board of Education uh, to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Exclusion Act. And that uh, e exhibition is here until February, tw February 25th. But there's lots happening. I mentioned the restaurants, but get by Markville Mall. There is a beautiful display of super trees and they bring you good luck. So you want to go over there right. and get some pictures and drop into the Markham Civic Center until next Wednesday. We have a beautiful dragon that you can get your picture just inside the doors of the Markham Civic For Center. For sure. Let's go over here. Of course, it's an Instagram world. So you have to take photos <laughs> but you know what's happening here with the kids from e-dance hey a shout out to e-dance they're doing a traditional 
um, Chinese paper cutting. Amir, I'll get you to come right in here and uh, you can show us what you're doing right here. Well, I hope I can see, pull this off. Yeah, so you've got one last cut. <laughs> right. I know. There's a lot of pressure to do this well, on you live know, TV, coordination, right? <laughs> you really need to have coordination to do this, right? How are you doing, kids? <laughs> Good. All right. I think I pulled it off. Oh, great. And so when you open it up, what do we have here? This, I am told is the Chinese character for spring, and it's double spring. Okay, yeah, so does that mean we're gonna have spring-like weather very soon? Starting tomorrow, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Love it, thank you so much, May. I really appreciate it. And you know, let's give a shout out here to the instructor. Hi, what's your name? My name is Ri Ying. Ri Ying, yeah. this is beautiful, and this is quite the art form. Yeah, yeah. and basically, if you have the basic skill, and yes. you can cut it within a couple of minutes. And Love it. It's a Chinese lucky knot. Or you can call it a lantern. Love <laughs> it. And then, of course, let's give a shout out to some of the dancers here. Some of these kids are, are from E Dance and Markov. Hi, can you wave, everybody? <laughs> Having a good time. Let's see if I can talk to one of them right here. Hi, I love what you're wearing. What's your name? My name's April. April, all right. So you're part of E-Dance. Yeah. What, um, what do you specialize in terms of dance? Which uh, type of dance? I don't really specialize, but I do ballet, Chinese dance, competitive jazz, and competitive lyrical. Wow, that's fantastic. I take it you really love dance. Yeah. You have a big competition coming up, right, April? In March, yeah. Are you ready for it? I hope so. Are you practicing? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit of your outfit here. Uh, this is a Chinese cultural outfit. Uh huh. And I wear it on Chinese New Year. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. And Mayor, thank you again. Thank you. We'll have you stand and give a big shout out to everybody watching at home. And we're hoping for early spring. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you. Hey, Lunar Nights right here at Markham Museum. You've got the beautiful outdoor trail there with the beautiful Chinese lantern structures, silk structures. There'll be ice skating, weather permitting, but you can also come inside to the museum as well and check out this very special exhibit. Joining me now is Janet. She is with the Markham Museum. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. So tell me, what is the name of this exhibit and what are we looking at here? Uh, the exhibition is called Standing in the Doorway mm -hmm. and it is an exhibition about the Chinese communities of York Region and the entire diaspora coming into this part of uh, Ontario. I love it. So as soon as you come in, my mouth hit the floor because look how beautiful these pieces are. Yeah, the Chinese opera material is beautiful. This is from a, a local Chinese opera company that's based in Markham, mm -hmm. and they have both early period pieces they brought from Hong Kong and also modern made here in Canada by, Ch by Chinese designers for local opera, which is adapted and changed to be uniquely on Canadian style. Wow, I love the pieces. It's beautiful. It is. And then, of course, you walk through the museum here, yep. and what do we have here? Uh, we have a bunch of material on this side of the room that's looking at restaurant culture, mm -hmm. uh, one of the very first early businesses that Chinese community members were involved with. Uh, so we have the Golden Pheasant. It was actually in Scarborough, but the family lives in Markham today. Okay. Uh, a bit about red packets. And then the other thing we have going further along is a little bit about dim sum and uh, a chance to practice using your chopsticks. Okay, and then from there, we've got a group of people here playing mahjong, which is so much fun, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's fun to teach people these different uh, games and have some fun with them. And so when you come to Lunar Nights, you have both the outdoor and indoor experience. Absolutely. There's actually three exhibitions in the building, yes. but this one is the uniquely Chinese And topic this is area. only here till February 20th. Correct. And then it's going on the road. It's going to go to Richard Stovall and tour around your region. There's also a school tour as well. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to bring in Rebecca now who's here with York Region District School Board and this is a beautiful collaboration with the school board and uh, Mark Museum. Tell me about it this. It is, yeah. It's been a joint effort between um, Mark Museum and the York Region District School Board, Museum and Archives and we've come together to really bring in the youth aspect and also the other generations here within York Region. Tell me about the beautiful tapestry that is hanging um, mm -hmm. just outside this exhibit. Yeah, Yes, outside is a beautiful tapestry. Um, it was created by students at uh, Burr Oak Secondary School. Uh, it ended up, it was uh, built on the themes of resilience. Uh, it ended up being uh, students from grades 9 to 12 all participated in 
uh, this project. You'll see even in the exhibit this yes. piece above us as well mm -hmm. um, that's in red is also another piece that's been done by uh, students from Burr Oak. We've had students from Unionville High School, Nokita, Markville, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, um, students and t educators all throughout York Region participate in this project. I love it and you'll see little pieces here um, about their participation. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we have some jerseys here um, because dragon boat racing is a big aspect within some of the schools. Mm -hmm. They end up participating in Pickering and also in Toronto International Dragon Boat Festival. Okay, thank you so much, Rebecca. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, so you. again, if you want to check out Lunar Nights, you have both experience outdoor and indoor. For more information, it takes place on select days and times. And there are days where you can bring your pets as well, your dog. Go to lunarnights.ca. Well, Valentine's Day means chocolate, cards, and of course, flowers. That's right, and Jan Lee is stopping and smelling the roses this morning with the floors at Market Four Seasons in North York. Get the hearts on your sleeve today, G, as always. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. And yes, we are here at Market Four Seasons in North York. The doors haven't even opened yet, but they are scrambling, getting everything ready because it's going to be a very busy day. Uh, the doors here, by the way, open at 8 a.m. And uh, this is a family-owned business. This is Alexia. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. All right, so Alexia, I don't want to interfere, but you're busy. <laughs> What's happening right now? You're just prepping the store? We are just setting up. So yesterday we had a lot of people come in trying to preemptively, you know, avoid the lines. Yes. So we're just restocking. Uh, we always try to keep everything fresh. So a lot of this stuff just came in yesterday. So we're just in the process of bringing everything up from the fridge and yes. making everything look full. Now, I know that red roses are in high demand. Your father, literally this morning, how many roses did he pick up? He picked up a couple thousand extra. <laughs> um, it's not atypical yes. flowers are something we always want to get you know within about two days to keep everything fresh that's yes. why people come to us um, so yeah he went out at about three in the morning picked everything up and rushed all the way back uh, they're offloading and prepping all those things now okay. for this afternoon let's have a look at the special orders yeah. here you actually have quite a few people that order in advance which is smart yes so a lot of our regular customers uh, know how busy it gets <laughs> uh, so this is just a handful of you know we've got tons and tons in the back all ready to be shipped out and picked up these um, are beautiful and what I love is some of this is more of a modern take on Valentine's Day for sure so a lot of our regular customers um, you know they don't want the red roses they want something different we know their personal style for their weekly flowers um, this one in particular is so pretty yes yeah. he is not a red roses fan he's yeah. not really even a pink fan um, <laughs> and he likes something a little different. So he's having a little party, and that's what we do for him. Beautiful, I'm gonna bring mom over here. This is Stella. Um, I actually know Stella and her, and her family, and it was your parents who started the store, that's right? Correct. Come this way. And so three generations working here, and now you have your kids working here. Yes, that's right. Um, and how does it feel to know that this has been um, around in this area for a while you have loyal customers absolutely yeah. it's a staple of the community yes. and it's a beautiful nice safe community and i'm very happy to, and proud of it yeah. um, especially now that my kids are involved it's been great it's three generations i can't believe it can't believe it yeah. either and your parents are probably watching right now the ogs who started <laughs> it all so thank you so much for allowing us here i'll let you get guys get back to getting the store ready so again alexia doors open at eight but you cannot get any special orders now it's too late it's too late guys i'm sorry but next year you just have to pick it up uh, bouquets and i've got this special rose i might be able to sell it for like a lot <laughs> right because they're in high demand we'll see and look at oh that, God, that, Is that no know. that's just a, a truck pulling up okay hopefully breakfast hopefully breakfast <laughs> oh it's heavenly even my cameraman ken was saying can you imagine being here all day it smells gorgeous in here because you have all these incredible fresh cut flowers uh, joining me now is alexia and alexia we know that valentine's day is the second busiest event for you yeah. for a single day event right for sure mother's day comes first yes and uh it's too late 
to get any sort of special orders, but you can come on by and pick up a bouquet. And you've got so many different choices here. Walk me through this. Yeah, so we've got, you know, your classic yeah. rose bouquets all ready to go. We'll be making those all day. Yes. You know, you've got your pre-made mixed bouquets if you're trying to get something a little bit different. Um, you've got a little bit more of a modern take on the roses. So, you know, really clean lines, some special colors. Wow. And uh, so this one is a blue, but these are these are done naturally, right? Right? Yes. So apart from those few up yeah. there, all of these colors are actually natural. Wow. Um, okay. We're so lucky. Okay. There's so many other colors you can come and view around this side. So we'll walk around this way. Obviously the classic roses, but for somebody who's looking for something beautiful, but just maybe on a tighter budget, what would work for them? Tulips. Absolutely tulips. Um, uh, yeah. So many different styles, locally grown. Gorgeous colors. And again, a different variety of colors. Like I've never seen green tulips. That's so pretty. Yeah, so now they've started to infuse tulips too to uh -huh. start to get you all these really interesting colors. And then you were telling me that obviously peonies are really popular, but there's a different take on that now. Yeah, so unfortunately peonies are not in season. Mm -hmm. It's a really short season. But ranunculus are the flower of the moment. Locally grown, um, all natural color, every wedding planner will know about them and they almost double in size and just last really, really great. Wow, so if you're a fan of peonies, since they're not in season, go for something like this. Absolutely, ranunculus are your way to go. Okay, <laughs> and then we walk around this way again and you can mix and match some of these flowers. Exactly, so you, our customers can bring up whatever selection they like, customize their own bouquets, and then our designers can put them together for them uh, at the back counter. Okay, very nice, thank you so much. I'm gonna bring in mom Stella here, who's been <laughs> with the price gun. Hello. So how crazy does it get here for Valentine's Day? Uh, well, like I uh, mentioned before, yeah. this is our second busiest day. Um, it's crazy. Uh, mm. it's, it's wonderful to see all the men lining up to buy flowers. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an exciting day for sure. But it's it hectic. Yes, and normally you open at 9, but today you're opening at 8, eight to accommodate uh, the crowds. And they actually have signs put up everywhere because it's, it's a tight, narrow space. That's correct. Here you can select your own flowers yes. and we can assemble them for you up front or there's pre-made bouquets everywhere. Um, at the back yes. we have a pickup section for pre-orders. Right. Everything's just ready to go. and. So we've separated it in the back section so it, the, the lineups don't get too uh, too crazy. Wow, so do you ever get a break? Because I feel like this is all year round kind of business, right? Like, Well, we're in the service industry, so definitely holidays, we work extra hard. Yes. But, uh, you know, it's, it's nice owning a small business, working for yourself, family business, like, that my parents started years ago. It's uh, it's nice to see. It's it's nice to be a part of something happy. Flowers make people happy. They certainly do. Thank yeah. you, Stella. That's right. Flowers do make people happy. <laughs> so again, we're standing by. The doors are supposed to open at 8 a.m. We'll see. We know that they've already fulfilled uh, all the special orders. Those are going out today. But yes, uh, you can feel it, flowers everywhere. It's Valentine's Day, and um, we're gonna spend the morning here at uh, Market Four Seasons. We are live here at Market Four Seasons. The doors are open, and customers are already coming in. We've got one gentleman here. Hi, good morning. I know, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Hi. Hi, picking up a beautiful bouquet. Who are the flowers for? Those are for my wife. Oh, <laughs> any special plans for tonight? Uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to figure that one out. Dinner, oh. I'm sure. Dinner, of course. Thank you so much. Okay, Happy you. Valentine's Day. Nice. I've got my Valentine's Day sweater on and you know who else is also dressed up? We've got little Isabella here and her mom Valentina. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So you picked up some flowers this morning Isabella. Who are the flowers for? Miss um, Tesfaye and Miss Al. These are your teachers? Yeah. And you're gonna give them flowers for Valentine's Day? Why? Do you like them? Yeah? yeah? What do you want to say to your teachers that are watching this morning? <laughs> do you say happy Valentine's Day? Look right in there and say happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Valentina, you were just saying that Isabella loves coming here. She does. We live down the street, so we always come here. And the owners know her. Everyone who works here knows her. And this is her favorite place. Yeah. And how special is it that she wants to give something to the teachers for Valentine's It's amazing. You know what? Her teachers are so great. And she loves them. She's so excited to go to 
to school every day, so she wanted to do something special for them this morning. Oh, very nice, and I love that. We need to show our teachers, you know, our appreciation. For so, sure. and did she put, pick out this outfit specifically for today? She did. She did, and she helped pick out mine as well. <laughs> love it. Thank you so much. I'll let you get to school because I know it's going to be a busy day. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Everybody's in the spirit. Um, one gentleman, as soon as the door opened at 8 this morning, came right in, picked up a, a dozen white roses. I've actually noticed a couple gentlemen picking up white roses, so that's really interesting. Alexia's behind the counter. She's got food in her mouth because it's busy. Prepping for the day. So no surprise, right, Alexia? You've got customers that came in right at 8 a.m. Oh, yeah. On their way to work. We're right off the highway, so we'll get a ton of people. Um, and cute little ones going yeah. to get their first Valentine's Day gift. And then <laughs> I know we, you already received a phone call this morning from people mm -hmm. asking if they can do a special order, but no. That's Unfortunately, yes. we cannot. That's when mistakes get made and that's when our floor gets empty. Yes. We want to make sure people can shop all day. Yeah, yeah. So come, you can come in to get those fresh cut flowers. It looks like somebody... Let's see who's here. Oh, they're getting the fresh flowers out now. Some of these flowers were picked up early this morning, and we've got somebody who just walked in. But that's okay. We'll let her do some shopping. So these just got picked up this morning, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. First thing this morning at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Thou uh, thousands and thousands of flowers, right? I think so. <laughs> okay, so we'll see. It's uh, You can feel the vibe. It's already busy here. Lots of customers already coming through. So we are standing by. But yeah, everyone getting in the spirit of Valentine's Day. If it's roses or orchids, maybe a little bottle of wine, some dinner. I'm just setting the mood for anybody tuning in this morning. So we are here at Market Four Seasons. It is busy. Uh, we've had customers come through since 8 a.m. this morning buying flowers. I have to say, majority of the people that have come in so far are men, which is nice to see. Um, we did have one mom and her daughter picking up a couple of bouquets of flowers for the teachers. Alexia here joins me now. She's just... Um, packaging some uh, floral arrangements here so far so busy i mean i know right now it's a little quiet but we had a lineup of customers just uh, uh not too long ago yeah everyone always comes at once but it's good it gives us these few moments to kind of prep and then refill keep everything nice and full for everyone so so far majority of the customers that have come in have bought roses but it was nice to see a few bouquets of white roses that seems yes. to be really popular White roses are a classic rose, you know, they open huge. Um, and it's, you know, not red roses isn't for everyone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it's the classic flower, but if you want to try something different, why not? Exactly. And it looks like we have somebody who just come in. Hey, sorry to put you on the spot. Come on over. You're live on CB24. You literally just walked okay. in. Happy Valentine's <laughs> Happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. You're here to pick up a bouquet of flowers? Uh, to, yeah, to pick up some flowers. For and who? My wife. Nice. And what are your plans for Valentine's Day? Uh, not, taking the kids out doing some other stuff. <laughs> life. I, life today. Life. life. I know. We put you on yeah. the spot. Is there something specific that you're looking for for your wife this morning? Peonies, if they're available. Oh, okay. Well. We talked about this earlier. <laughs> Peonies are not in season right now, okay. but I have a beautiful alternative for you. Yeah. Okay. So I'll let, let's walk on down. We'll show you. Actually, peonies are one of my favorite flowers, but as Alexia was mentioning, there's a, an alternative to that. So, so just keep going straight. So all the way straight. at the front, I'll meet you there. So on your right-hand side here, you're going to find ranunculus. This is the peony of the season. They open really huge, but they last a lot longer. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Uh, they're nice. I like, like pastel colors. Pastels? Yeah. Okay. So you've got great taste, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we're putting you on the spot. We're going to follow you right uh -oh. through to your purchase. Come on down. <laughs> um, and what's your name, by the way? Jack. Jack. Okay, Jack. I'll let you pick out the flowers. We'll come on down this way. We've like got another customer who's coming. Hi, sorry to put you on the spot. You're live on CP24. Happy Valentine's yeah. Day. Happy Valentine's Day. So you're here to pick up uh, some flowers. Who is the special person? It's for my wife. Nice. <laughs> Any special plans? Uh, no, unfortunately, I have a long day of work today. But, um, yeah, she uh, doesn't like me ordering in flowers because yeah. of the uh, increased price of yeah, that. So yeah. she's like, if you give me flowers, just... Don't order it, pick it up. So here I am, bright and early. <laughs> You're a good husband. Anything in particular? Um, she likes roses. Yeah, um, classic. And just like a mixture of flowers. So I'm just going to look for something that pops. 
Okay, I'll yeah. let you go. Thank you so much. Uh, so there you go. A lot of customers coming through. Come on this way, Ken. And um, we want to obviously have a final goodbye from the whole family here. Stella, mom is here. Your parents who opened up this store are watching, so we'll say hello. Hello. And then your kids right there. It's a family affair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for allowing Happy this. Valentine's Day. Thank you from all of us at Market Four Seasons. There you go. Ah. <laughs> Jian Lee is getting some tips and inspiration this morning from designer and artist Steven Savados. Yeah, G's back in Steven's studio loft learning about an ancient Japanese art form. Okay, G, what are we doing today? Oh, I love this project. It's called Japanese Shibori. And joining me now is designer and artist Steven Sabados. Hello. I love the fact that you're always creating. Always, always, yeah. always. My house is li literally a studio. We're now in the kitchen, <laughs> so hey, why not make it a studio? <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about Japanese Shibori. Japanese Shibori, it's fantastic. It's a very ancient art form from the 8th century, wow. which is amazing. So, and it's, it's very classic. So I wanted to go through some of the folding techniques to show you some of the classic patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, you can experiment and do whatever you want, but this is, I think, kind of cool when we know these. Uh, so first we're gonna start, oh, first thing, 100% um, cotton, 100% uh, linen, 100% bamboo, a natural fiber, okay? So uh, it could be a napkin that just has some uh, scrap fabric. You're gonna be making kumo shibori, mm -hmm. okay, which is kind of interesting. So you're gonna take some pebbles, uh, or even could be like uh, marbles, whatever. So tuck them under, yeah and then just wrap it with elastics. Okay. So there you go. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna get over here and I'm gonna show you another one. This is called Itajimi Shibori, which when you sort of see it, so right now it doesn't look like anything, mm -hmm. but when we uh, show after the dye bath, they're gonna be phenomenal. So I'm gonna fold it like this and like an accordion fold, okay? And then from here, I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna fold it again and again. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but flip it over, it's like napkin folding, isn't it? It's like origami. Origami, exactly. <laughs> so we created this little sandwich. Uh -huh. We're gonna take two pieces of wood, okay? And these I was telling you earlier, I got these from the dollar store, they're coasters, wooden coasters. So anything substantial anything, to hold it Yeah, in just place. to hold okay. it. So here we've made a little sandwich. Yes. If I can get you to help me. Yes. We're going to, if you want to clamp that. Right. So you don't have to clamp it, but I think with use these little C clamps, you get them super tight, and the tighter they are, the more dramatic the pattern is going to be. Oh, right. Okay, you could use elastics or whatever, but again, these little C-clamps you can get anywhere. There Got we go, it. that's okay. done. So I also did the same thing with this, but now I just use two pieces of wood. Okay. And then with these little zip ties, I zip ties them. So it's really in there really good, okay? So these guys are ready for the dye bath. Right. Next one. This is called Arashi Shibori, mm -hmm. okay? And this one here, again, every technique does a completely different pattern. So again, experiment, whatever, which is super cool. So we're gonna fold this in half. We're gonna get anything, a pipe, this plastic PVC pipe, a rolling pin, what have you. We're gonna roll this up and gonna put elastic on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And now here's the fun part. You just take it, and we're just gonna squeeze it down. Oh, do you need help here? Mm-hmm. Okay. And now put an elastic on the top. And there we go. So see all these little crinkle patterns? Yes. Okay, we want those. And then what are you gonna do? We're gonna take a piece of string. And if you can hold it, we're gonna just tie it on and then just wrap it super tight. The tighter you can get this, the better and stronger the pattern is going to be. Okay, and again, just wrap it around, 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 around. And okay. I don't have scissors, so here we go. We're just gonna pretend tie this. And then we're showing some pictures where it shows the fabric and the patterns on that. Yeah, yeah. so you can do it, like I said, you can do it uh, you know, for anything. You can do it for bedding, you can do it for t-shirts, you can do it, like again, these could be like uh, you know, uh, a tablecloth right. or what have you. So here's this, so this is gonna be quite tight. Uh -huh. And you have all these ready yes. to go here. Sure. Next thing, we can talk about the dye bath. Yes. So traditionally, you'd use a shibori kit. They're very involved, but nowadays, we can get pre-made dye. Woohoo! Right? So again, any art supply store, you can get these dyes. Just make sure it's indigo. And now there's a specific reason why it's indigo, right? Because traditionally, a shibori was used, it was called, uh, it was an indigo plant. Yes. And this color is very 
I'm gonna say very traditional color. You can experiment and do all kinds of colors if you want, okay. but. So we have about 30 seconds okay. to show this. So we're gonna pour this in. Yes. And then from here, hon, while we're in the kitchen, we're gonna take some boiling water. All right. Okay, now, can you just start dumping these dumping in? Dumping them in. Really? Just oh, yeah. put it right put in there? Put okay. them in. There we go. And how long should they stay in there? Now, the longer they stay in, the deeper the color. Right. And we can throw this one in. Okay. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to say roughly about 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So while this is in there, in the next segment, we're going to show you the patterns that come out of this. And this is a great do-it-yourself project for the kids, or even if you want to create some beautiful fabrics at home. Uh, so at, uh, in the next segment, you definitely want to catch what it looks like once we pull it out. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. So we're doing Japanese shibori, which has been so fascinating. Steven Sabados, designer and artist, joins me now. All right, so we had the fabrics inside the dye. Inside the dye bath. How uh, long did uh, we? About 20 minutes, 20 minutes or so. Yeah, okay. the, sort of depending. The longer you keep it in there, the deep, darker it's going to go. Now we're going to unclamp it. So when we did, so we rinsed it under cold water mm -hmm. to get most of the dye out. And then now, you can see the finished product. Reveal, <gasps> and you can open this up. That's so it's beautiful. So, it's honestly, it's amazing. Every time I see it, yes. I get so excited. So now I understand why you kept emphasizing keeping it tight, tight, tight. Keeping right? it tight. To prevent the dye from coming through and it creates this pattern. Exactly, and you kind of see here, let's open her up. Yes. So from here. Oh, this is beautiful. It's like absolutely stunning, isn't it? So it's the same pattern as we can see here yes. that I made like a little tablecloth or something like that, which is super cute. Yeah, this um, would look beautiful like on an outdoor uh, table in your backyard or on the balcony. Absolutely, and imagine these uh, matching uh, napkins. Oh, very right? nice. Which would be okay. absolutely beautiful for this. Right. So once we have this here, so what you can do, it's still wet, that's why we have our, our gloves on. Right. We can take, there's another thing, a fixative, okay, which you can also purchase. I put it into a mist bottle. Which makes it easier. And then you can just mist it. Okay. And then now hang it to dry. Okay, for how long? Like just till it. it's completely like, dry? Until it's completely dry, yeah. From there, um, what I would do is you can then gently wash it or hand wash it. Now, okay. on a regular basis to wash it, you, you, you recommend hand washing it and don't stick it in with any whites, right? <laughs> you will get a navy blue t-shirt if you put it in with whites. Got it, okay. um, And then here, now we're gonna cut this one. So open this one up. All right. And you can see, remember this one? We did the same folding technique, yes. but with just the two little twigs. Oh, that's so pretty. And look how awesome this is. So yes. we're creating, as you open up that, yes. it creates this pattern, which again, very traditional Japanese pattern, which yes. is fantastic. Yeah. And how easy could this be? And this would look beautiful, like on a t like Turkish towel for the pool. Sarongs. Um, uh, again, as long as it's 100% natural fabric. Look how great this is. Come oh, on, so look, pretty. Right. And then how do you incorporate Stunning. this? Let's say in a room, like a bedroom or something. If you did, what I would do is I would do this same, uh, the same. Obviously, we're using the same indigo dye. Yes. Uh, and then do it on pillows, on a duvet, on a matching pillow. Um, and again, you're incorporating all the patterns, right. but everything's going to go because it's all the same color, right? And Which is kind of cool. And there is something special about indigo being in the bedroom. It's a very calming oh, effect. Very right? much so, okay. absolutely. And again, it sort of transcends, you know, I, I think it, it's number one, it's incredibly traditional, but oh, also wow. it's not juvenile, like it still has a sophistication to it, yes. which I absolutely love. So this pattern here, you can see that you're doing, once all the stones come out, Yes. this is the classic pattern that is, which again, <gasps> Stunning. Stunning. I know. And again, let's not, this is very different from the 70s tie dye that we saw in those Grateful Dead t-shirts, right? <laughs> this, is a, this is a tradition that's been around for centuries. For centuries, and it's again, it's, an, it's a beautiful art form. Not that, you know, tie dye is an art form, I yes. mean, it can be. But uh, this I love because, again, like I said, it's it's very sophisticated, yes. you know? And I love that um, you could do this with the kids, you could do this yourself at home. Absolutely, again, super. You don't need a lot of stuff. So we're gonna yes. unveil this one here. Okay. So this is the, the, I don't know, it's called the linear one. I can't remember the name, don't uh, don't quiz me on this. But again, the idea was it, everything had to be done tight. to Tight, tight, yeah, tight. Tight, tight, tight. Because that's gonna create all these patterns. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, look, look at this. Look how great this is, look, come on. See, and like literally, you just did this in two minutes. Right. Um, here's <gasps> this one here. Oh, this one's so pretty. So look, okay, let's open this up here. Yeah. It's kind of hard. Ah, here oh. we go. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so pretty. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah, so again, and then when it's completely dry. It looks like that. It looks 
like this. And this has been a hot trend for a while in design, right? It's been a huge, huge trend. Yeah, absolutely. And every uh, uh, thing of home decor, you know, in furniture, say if you're going to do this on a huge piece of fabric yes. and then reupholster some chairs and make matching pillows. Like, it's super, super easy. And again, denim, this indigo color has been super hot trend for, for yeah, at least a few years now yeah. in, in home decor. Great. Oh, uh, and for napkins, it's a hostess gift. I love it. Hostess gift, yeah. Yeah. No okay. money. So for more design tips and ideas and inspirations, make sure you follow Stephen Sapados on his social media platforms. Um, I love it. Thank you so much. Shibori. Who knew? Shibori. Auto Show at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. Gee, you're not cold plunging, but you're getting into some pretty hot vehicles this morning. <laughs> Yeah, and if you are a hockey fan, this vehicle is for you. This is the 2024 Hyundai Tucson. And what's really cool about this is you can accessorize the car with your favorite hockey team. So basically, you can have um, the NHL team logo on your cargo tray, the front floor liners, or on the door sills. How cool is that? So you pick your favorite team and you show it off with your new vehicle. As you know, the auto show is underway. It's uh, doors open at 12 p.m. and runs through till February 25th. Joining me now is Jason Campbell with the auto show. Hi, good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. So every year, bigger and better. This year in particular is bigger and better. Last year was our first year after two years hiatus from the pandemic. Yeah. There was a lot of uncertainty. What were we going to find? This year, a lot more confidence in the market. The products are coming back. They're on the dealerships lots again. And there's a big pent-up demand that we're trying to satisfy. And a lot of people out here shopping for cars. Love it. One of the trucks or cars that people are talking about is this Tesla Cybertruck. What is this? This looks incredible. Well, it's certainly going to take a, a lot of uh, a lot of people's attention here at the show. This is a vehicle that's been in waiting for for about four years since it was first launched. It had this uh, this incredible launch event where, uh, <laughs> if you remember, I think there was a, there was a an issue with uh, the initial launch plans when they basically tried to prove its. Uh, bulletproof capacity in the glass uh, broke on on the first instance but since then it's been refined it's been produced it's now this incredible marvelous vehicle which is sitting in front of us zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds hauling capacity of about 12,000 pounds the world's largest glass structure the world's largest windscreen wiper it's certainly getting a lot of attention here but it's one of many cars yeah. so this is probably the best show we've had in many years yeah. for spectacular one-off vehicles that uh, that you just won't find anywhere anywhere else. Behind us here is the FAF McLaren booth. They've got a series of four McLarens, yes. three Paganis, probably $25 million worth of cars sitting on that one display alone. We've got Camp Jeep, which is a hugely popular feature last year at the show. We did 26,000 test drives and new products galore. The, the new 2025 Ram pickup trucks here. We've got new concepts uh, of Dodge and uh, an electrified concept from, from the next version of the Ram electric, uh, battery electric pickup truck. So much to see and do here, and we're expecting another big, big, big weekend. It's family day weekend, a lot of family activities. We've got the Barbie car here, a Hot Wheels display, Lego display for the kids. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It will be a lot of fun. Um, I've had the opportunity to go on that course with Jeep. We're gonna do that a little bit later this morning. But again, with this Cybertruck, this isn't a concept car. We're actually gonna see this on the road. Yeah, they're starting deliveries. Uh, a lot of people put their money down when this was first first revealed and uh, we're going to start seeing the uh, the products on the road slowly trickling this has uh, been a process to try and get this vehicle up and running as with any new new product but this one in particular because of its unique design uh, it's all all steel body it's uh, intended to make it uh, more robust reduce scratches reduce uh, denting and i think it's going to be exciting when people see it here on the show and yeah. see it out on the roads amazing all right thank you so much for joining us That's jason great, nice to see you nice again. to see you again so again uh, doors open at 12 p.m today runs through till february 25th for information tickets all that stuff you just go to autoshow.ca good morning we are live here at the 2024 canadian international auto show and of course there's so much fun for families for kids you can come here to the hot wheel section play with the little car watch out here we go so fun for the kids and then from a little tiny car to the real deal that's what it's about here i'm going to put on my favorite accessory because guess what we're going to see 
We're going to see the Barbie car. It's making its Canadian debut. Joining me now is Brian Benedict, key hi, principal Barbie. designer. <laughs> hi, hi, Ken, or hi, Brian. <laughs> uh, you are the key principal designer at with Mattel. Yeah. At Mattel. Yeah. And I love the saying here, it's not the same without the flame. <laughs> love yes. it. So we're here and we're going to talk about the Barbie yeah, car. Yeah, absolutely. Come on in. So what's cool is you come here, you go through the line, and yes. of course, it's an Instagram world, Brian. We got of to course. Take. You got to have those moments, IG right? moments, right? <laughs> and this is how people come and pose. <laughs> That's and then once right. you come through here, we get in to see the car. Tell me a little Absolutely, bit more about yes. this. And this is Barbie's very first time at the auto show. And in fact, this is um, the first time we've brought this car out to Canada. And uh, what better place to bring it than the Canadian International Auto Show? Um, this car is so iconic, yes. you know, I mean, so Barbie, uh, historically, way back when I was a kid, you know, Barbie had this Corvette and they brought it back for the movie, you know, the, the, the iconic 57 uh, Corvette in that Barbie pink. And, um, you know, the, of course, the movie was such an iconic yes. moment. Uh, and uh, so we brought it here and it's a, it. a chance to relive, you know, our childhood. Everyone wants to... Uh, experience that. Great. Can I go in? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to go in. Oh, here. Let me and help this you. is a real 1957. Yes, it is. Corvette, and, right? and it's inspired by the movie car. Yes. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, there you go. Okay. How does it look? Oh, you How look do I great. Look in it? You look great. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's making its Canadian debut. Um, and tell me a little bit more about this car. It's yes. so iconic, right? Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, obviously the, the 57 Corvette features so heavily in the movie. Mm -hmm. It's her, her mode of transportation back and forth between uh, Barbie land and the real world. And um, uh, this car, you know, goes way back in, in Barbie's history. And so we built this one. Um, had, had Action Vehicle Engineering, our partner out in California, um, build the car in that exact Barbie pink, uh, fully custom Barbie interior. Uh, it's just a beautiful car. And uh, people can come here, see it, uh, get pictures with it, uh, and, and enjoy the rest of our booth with the Hot Wheels uh, play experience. Amazing, and then what's really cool is you've got the little mini Hot Wheels cars there, but when you go downstairs, you can actually see the life-size vehicles, yes, right? Yes, we've, we've got, yeah, right when you go in that front entrance yes. uh, downstairs, there's four full-size Hot Wheels cars, um, all kinds of fun stuff to see. We've got a great, great experience here at the show this year. Uh, I have to say, when I come to the auto show, one of the most favorite spots for the kids is the Hot Wheels yes. section, right? Because you see those little toy cars come to life. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, and kids of all ages, too. Yes. You know? <laughs> I've seen quite a few adults play with the sets <laughs> over here, too. <laughs> That's true. Come on in. All right. All right. So again, if you want to check out the Barbie car, it's making its Canadian debut. You can come to the Canadian International Auto Show. Starts today, runs through until February 25th for information autoshow.ca. We're on the racetrack here at Camp Jeep and we're going 100 kilometers an hour. Wow. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Wow. Just kidding. We don't go more than eight kilometers an hour. It's just a fan. I'm just having my Beyonce moment there. <laughs> we don't go more than eight kilometers here at Camp Jeep. Nick joins me now. I went on this course last year. It's so much fun. And we're going to go in this vehicle. Tell me a little bit more about this. So this car. one is our 2024 Gladiator Rubicon. So we're just going to test what makes a Jeep trail rated as we go throughout the course here. I love the color. Me too. It's one of my favorites. Okay, let's hop right let's in. Let's do it. So this is what you do. You come to Camp Jeep, you sign up, and then you get to go for a ride. Tell me a little bit more of like, you can just come sign up and just hop right in. Yeah, so anyone is welcome here. As long as you're 18 or older, you can ride by yourself. If you're under 18, you'll just need an adult to register. Okay. And you just have to be 44 inches or taller to come on the ride. Okay, let's go let's for it. it. All right, and so tell me a little bit more about this obstacle course. All right, so we are just testing what makes a Jeep trail rated here. So we drive up the obstacles like stairs up here to show off the ground clearance. We have some bumps up there. <laughs> <laughs> what impresses me the most is that the vehicle could go over things like this, like oh, even yeah. stairs. And like it does this it smoothly. Is like you would expect it to be a lot bumpier than it actually is. That's true. Mm -hmm. And tell me some of the features of this particular car in general. 
So this one has 11.3 inches of ground clearance. Right. Obviously, you can take the top and doors off for that full open air experience that everyone loves. Yes. It is going to be waterproof in here, too. So if we do get caught in the rainstorm, no, it's going to get damaged now, on it. This is fun. I can't get over the angle on this. I know. So this is the stability wedge. We're yes. going about 25 degrees up here. And we're not going to tip over because we have a low center of gravity. We could actually stop here and give it a little shake. What? It's not going anywhere. <laughs> nice and sturdy. <laughs> okay, and then this is the best part coming up. Yes, this one is my favorite part. It's the traction hill. It's five kilometers tall, 35 yeah. degrees up and 35 degrees back down. Wow. And it crawls it like it's nothing. <laughs> you ready? Again, yes, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. And again, what impresses me the most is how smooth the ride is. Oh, yes, I agree. You'd expect it to be a lot rougher for what we're doing out here, but handles it well. Ah, ah. You can give it a little brake check. Oh. Keep on going. It's like a little mini roller coaster ride, but only going eight kilometers an hour. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this has been such a highlight for the auto show. I know a lot of people come here. They line up mm -hmm. because really it's a fun way to test out these cars, right? I agree. Everyone wants to get in the vehicle and actually see how it drives. They don't want to just look at it on the floor anymore. No. So. Thank you so much, of Nick. Let's course. call. Oh Thank my you. goodness! And so again, this is just one of the Jeeps that you can uh, hop into. Tell me about some of the other cars that go on the track here. Yeah, so we actually have the Wranglers out here as well, and the Grand Cherokees. There's one going up there. There it is, right on the hill there. And we actually have the 4xE out here this year as well. So that's the plug-in hybrid one. So you can do the whole track in electric. Really? Mm -hmm. So what's the feeling like when you go into the electric car? It's just crazy because you don't hear any sound, and it's quiet when it goes over the obstacles. Again. Okay, so Camp Jeep, one of the fun features here at the Canadian International Auto Show. Uh, again, a reminder, you do not get to drive the car. You leave it up to the experts <laughs> like Nick. But where can people go and how do they sign up for this? So as soon as you walk in and yeah. we are in the North Hall, you'll just head down to our registration area where you're going to see all the iPads set up down there. Yes. We'll have plenty of people down there helping you get registered and then you can hop in one of the Jeeps. Yeah, and then again, you have to be 40 44 inches or taller. Yep. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Of and again, course. the auto show uh, doors open at 12 today, runs through till February 25th. And if you want more information, autoshow.ca. It is the full on camping experience here at the Canadian International Auto Show. They have real marshmallows. And I don't know if you can hear, the birds are chirping, and they actually have a pine scent roaming through this area here at Chevrolet. I feel like I'm camping right now. Joining me now is James Hodge. Good morning. Good morning, Jean. Welcome to the Z that are two overlanding zone with Chevrolet. I love it. And so it really is taking the uh, pickup truck to the next level. Absolutely. We're showcasing our ZR2 lineup yeah. of trucks. It showcases the abilities that they can do. They can take Canadians out of the city and pretty much go anywhere with these trucks. Okay, let's have a look at this feature here. I love the fact that there's a kitchen. <laughs> built into this. So yeah, so you can outfit these ZR2 trucks pretty much with any accessory yeah. that allows you to go camping. You can see our kicker audio in the tailgate as well, so you can listen to whatever tunes you want to listen to yeah. while you're making breakfast in camping. You don't even need to go to the cottage. You can just take your truck. You can take your Chevy truck yeah. to, to anywhere you want to go. Anywhere. I can see people using this for tailgating. Absolutely. Right? Tailgating, camping, overlanding. These trucks with their two inch lift and more aggressive tires will let you go pretty much anywhere you want to go. Yeah, so let's talk about some of the features here. There's a reason why this works, um, not only when you're using it for work, but for play as well. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, we're showcasing our trio of yeah. trucks, a mid-sized truck, probably a little more appropriate for the city. Uh -huh. And we've got tailgate protectors for your bikes if you're going cycling. And then of course, the pop-up tents, which really, really make it so much easier to, to to camp because you don't have to set up a tent. You just unlatch them and pop the tent up. It's really wonderful for camping. I love it. Okay, and you've done this with your wife. We have, yeah. yeah. We, we, we've camped overnight <laughs> in these things. It's actually pretty comfortable up Let's there. Let's go in one. So we're going to go in here. I'll let you lead the way. Okay, all right. So Gee. it's pretty sturdy, right? It is. Yeah, don't worry. It's safe. Come on up. <laughs> Oh my goodness! And we're saw inside here, and this can actually <laughs> seat two people, right? You can yeah, have two I mean, people you in here? seat or sleep. Yeah, sleep, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite nice uh, for camping, as I mentioned. Yes. The whole the whole point here is that a Chevrolet truck can get you further out. Yeah. So you can camp wherever you want to do. Get out of the city and enjoy it. This is so comfortable. 
It is. It, it is. It's not bad for camping. It's quite nice. <laughs> and uh, the idea, once again, is taking that vehicle and really using it for many different purposes. Absolutely. Yeah, Chevrolet allows you to do that with our trucks. You get to go further. You get to go beyond in our ZR2 vehicles. I love it. And so when people come here, can they literally just come up here in the tent? We would love. We yeah. would love for them to come down, have a marshmallow, <laughs> like a real marshmallow. Birds. It's like you're camping in downtown Toronto. It really is wonderful. My goodness. Uh, I know that pickup trucks are really popular. A lot of people love they them, right? Are. In fact, we, we had a, a massive year. We sold more vehicles to Canadians than any other automaker wow. with General Motors. And Chevrolet was a big part of that with our lineup of trucks. We had some great sales success last year. So we want to celebrate it here uh, down at the auto show. Love it. James, this has been so much fun. I don't want to leave. I actually want to take a nap You here can stay as long as you want. <laughs> Gee, I'm going to make you a s'more after this. I Yay! hope that's okay. I love s'mores for breakfast. Thank you so much. <laughs> so again, if you want to come to the Canadian International Auto Show, doors open at 12. Runs through till February 25th. For tickets and information, autoshow.ca.